Hello everybody and welcome to the People's Poll uh, show each and every Tuesday where you get to choose the topic of conversation. Yes, you're confused now because it is actually Monday. How are we doing, James? I'm all right, thank you, Sid. Yeah. I was I was waiting for that. Yeah, yeah, Monday, so we can do a full review of uh, the, the games this week that include the Monday night games tomorrow. So just a little switcheroo uh, for the short term. Well, a couple of weeks because next week we've got Monday football as well, haven't we? It might be so, forever. Yeah. yeah, I feel uh, we'll, we'll we'll figure our rhythm out. Ultimately, all that happened over the weekend from an FPL point of view, I kept wanting to, I kept having to remind myself that there's still like, like after the Arsenal game when Aubameyang's blanking and everyone who doesn't own him like myself is thinking here here we go here we go here we go. Then he scores and you're like oh well he scored. Still seven more games to go. And then you've got the Crystal Palace game and then people that have started Mitchell, he gets his clean sheet. Still six games to go. Then Salah goes mental and I'm thinking still five games to go. It's like you can't get ahead of yourself. And now Timo Werner has obviously a ridiculously higher ownership of coming up to 50% now. He's my captain and he still hasn't played. So I just feel like, uh, yeah, got to wait, got to wait. Got to be patient. Yeah, I think probably at the moment, probably four penalty saves for Matt Ryan. This could be a good game week for me, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I'm hoping to end on uh, 55 to 60 points, and I'll, that's, I think that's decent enough to get me one. <laughs> yeah, okay, mate. You'll be beating me this week for sure. Well, that's a given. You've only got Matt Ryan left, haven't you? Uh, I've got Ramsdale, Havertz, and uh, Captain Inverna, so... It's not been a good start. Nah. But let, that's not what we're here to talk about on this sh- particular uh, partly, show. Partly, partly. Um, yeah, it'll, it'll bleed into. I mean, uh, do you want to tell everybody what the topics that they could choose from were? And then uh, let's talk about the one that won narrowly in the end. VAR. Will it now work successfully in the Premier League? Fan perspective was one option. I, I don't think anything's ever picked up. Less, <laughs> less votes in the <laughs> poll. Uh, I thought it may be interesting because certainly there were things in the Crystal Palace Southampton match which worked and felt smoother and better. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot I'm still going to be unhappy with, but it didn't win anyway and we didn't think it would. Uh, new signings and whether they should interest us in FPL, we'll, we'll bleed some of that into obviously tomorrow's main podcast anyway, talking about the likes of James Rodriguez, etc. And the winner of the poll was captaincy. And specifically, it's importance in FPL and upcoming game weeks. And the reason it's a subject really at all is two reasons. One, selfishly, i got a problem for whatever reason with picking captains at the moment. Don't ever take my advice on captain. Two, obviously what happened with Salah on Saturday has caused let's say, mass split in Twitter community between good week and bad week, basically. So ultimately, in answer to your question, because I uh, don't choose what goes into the people's poll, but rarely might have an opinion. Um, And so when you put stuff in there, it's always new to me as well when you put the tweet out. I mean, we might have had a discussion that Wigan's going to go in this week or whatever. We don't discuss shit. (laughs) But Captain C, I looked at it and I was like, "That's it's, it's a little obvious. Like the the question, how important is captaincy in your FPL uh, team? Captaincy points make up about twenty percent of your overall total. If you score like two thousand, two hundred, two thousand three hundred, you're going to get five hundred, five hundred, five hundred fifty points out of your captain's decent. That's like a fifth to a quarter of your points in total will come from your captain. So you're talking about uh, for, for for the ease of maths, let's say. 500 points from your captain over the course of a season it's give or take six points every week from your captain as given uh, is what you're looking for and if you got six points every week from your captain you would have done okay over the course of a season from captaincy points mm, where does that put you at about four six eight something like that yeah not quite a, a little you need a little bit more but Thinking about, that, I, I suppose the reason I, I broke it down into that maths is some people were disappointed with, the, with what they got from Aubameyang's captaincy. Give me seven points every week and I'll take it. If you said to me your captain's only going to score you seven points every week until the now and then the season, but they will always score you seven points, I think I would probably take it. 
I'll go into the dynamics of my team on the podcast tomorrow, but as it stands, I'm on 33 points with Matt Ryan to go, which is obviously a bad start. Now, I captained Aubameyang. I don't particularly have regrets either on captain Aubameyang. I mean, he's the highest scoring player in my team. So from what I actually picked in my team, my captaincy selection from that is correct. And this Matt Ryan says four penalties, obviously. But part of the reason for flipping it is I obviously had a really bad percentage of returns on captains last year. Mm-hmm. I finished about 100 captain points behind you, I think. And yep. the difference between us at the end of the season was seven points or something. Yep. But this is basically the first bad game week I've had since March. Now, when I put it like that, I think, fucking hell, it's the first bad game week I've had for five months. That's all right. There's not been football for four of those, you plunk. <laughs> we know. Yeah, but still. <laughs> but during the restart period, I did very well. I mean, I think my lowest score was mid-50s. I was regularly in the 60s, 70s mm-hmm. for most of the weeks in the restart period. But I was missing captain quite a lot. And that's part why it, way, we just spilled the water all over the table. Ah, uh, you got me, Jesus, right. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <If> nothing else. <laughs> at least uh, you didn't piss yourself. As long as it's, long good, as it's, it's not good. on the leads. We got any no, tissues? We have. Actually, right behind me. Oh, well Magic. done. Have a clean up while I talk. Yes. Fucking so state. You're your captain. <laughs> <laughs> but still getting good returns. Yeah. And I obviously jumped quite significantly during the restart period as well. Yep. So that's why. I, I wonder, because you've kind of, I think, got a split of two different camps of people where, for one, the priority is to definitely have these best available captaincy choices and forcing in these 4.0 defenders, 4.5 midfielders slash forwards to give you the best available opportunity of as many premiums as possible. Now, one of the kind of thinking concepts for this season feels like it is jump between the likes of, for example, Salah and Aubameyang and then fit in a more balanced squad, for example. Yep. Do you think one or the other is right or wrong? Because of what happened with Salah this weekend, I think our perspectives are a little bit skewed. So if Mo Salah was to score um, 200 points over the entire season, that's probably a disappointment. But 240, let's say, if he scores 240 over the entire season, you'd be all right with that, right? As, a, as an FPI asset, if Mo Salah scores 240 points, you'd think, okay, that's a fairly decent return. Yeah, it's fine. So, I'm, I'm kind of barring that on what KDB did last year yeah, at 250. 250. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah, 240 is, so is decent. He's gone and scored 12% of his entire season's points on the first day of the season, which is incredible, right? Now, over the course of the season, if you looked at it last year, how many times did a player score 20 points or more probably what 10 maybe at best no probably not even that this would be one of the biggest holes of the season this is so i think the fact that it's come so early is what people are thinking oh wow if this had come in game week five or six and he'd had a four a three a seven and a two in between that i think people would be very thinking about it very differently because there's other players in that time that might have hauled as well like vardy did okay yesterday with a couple of penalties and what have you so um, it comes down to the explosiveness uh, of your captains. Like if your captains can get double-digit returns, 10, and you double that up to 20, great. You need a goal and a, an assist, or you need some BPS or what have you with that. So um, I'm com- I've am i got Timo Werner, Mo Salah. This is as it stands. I made no transfers. Obviously, he gave me one to two. Timo Werner, Mo Salah, um, uh, our friend Trent Alexander-Arnold, and maybe at a push, Danny Ings, four players that I'm comfortable captaining. That's all in my squad right now. I wanted to move to getting rid of Salah to give me uh, De Bruyne and Fernandez and Martial into my squad to give me four or five captaincy options. Yeah, it's fair. I mean, I'm looking towards over the next couple of weeks, yeah, De Bruyne. Fernandez, Martial, then, then make a clearer choice between Martial, Fernandez. Yes, Martial can easily become Werner. Then I've got the captaincy from there. Yeah, you just need one Chelsea asset to give you that. Trent cover. to cover Liverpool. Yes, I understand what you're saying. Mm. Um, get Aubameyang in when necessary. Get him out when he's not necessary or just keep him in. It's, there's yeah. obviously different ways of thinking this. Plus, we are potentially going to get emergence of players in the, let's say, 
eight to nine million bracket who perhaps aren't under serious consideration for captaincy at the moment who might become that for for example Harvitz, Pulisic, James Rodriguez or Richarlison mm-hmm. further down the line don't laugh at the back Hyun Ming Sun maybe even these players don't feel like captaincy options now but in three or four months or even less might do and then that changes the landscape of how you want to set up your FPL team I think yeah. if someone like Pulisic starts scoring at a rate of every week basically you know they're saying attacking return every week Mm. then it becomes a serious option at a price that then means you don't necessarily need these premiums as such but then we know with these premiums the guys of Salah Aubameyang etc you put a marker there of say 240 points per season I mean it's about 7% of his returns by the way but that's where we would expect these guys to be. Whereas I think Pulisic, we, would, as an example, or Harvitz, do we really know at the moment they've got the ceiling to push past a, a 200. Now, if either of them push past a, a 200 points, they're going to be in a lot of fucking teams, right? Mm. We don't know the answers to that as yet. Even with Timo Werner, to be fair, I think most of us think, yeah, he's going to go mad. His ownership's massive. As I've said, if he doesn't return tonight... I think you, you you probably see quite a big exodus quite quickly with them playing Liverpool at the weekend. Now, the flip of that is you might, oh, they're not right defensively, I'll keep him. Yeah, and that's absolutely fine. But I think the the likes of Richarlison showing up yesterday, I know he didn't return, but anybody who watched the game was probably thinking, how the fuck did he not return? Um, spreading the fuds to, to allow a 5.5 to become James Rodriguez, for example, and obviously attacking Martial coming into the game this week, plus Bruno, etc., means that the guys who obviously haven't returned this week are going to be under serious threat, right? The chance which, which basically means most of my fucking squad. Yeah, it, it <laughs> is literally... Um, the, the, the reality is that uh, Salah's ownership was around 30s, uh, 30-something percent, and of the people that, that captained him, let's say 20% of the game, 80% didn't. And those guys who are in that 20% have had a very good start and an even better very good start. But that's life. Sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. It could just as easily have been a Bamiyang that scored two and Salah scored one. It would be the other way around. It's going to be difficult to claw that back, but you'd rather it happen in game week one than any other time because now we've got the most game weeks. I, I, like, I have no regrets about Captain or Bamiyang this week. I have no regrets about captaining Timo Werner, but then that game hasn't happened yet, so it could be quite different. When I when I'll tell you what about Aubameyang, right? That made me think, oh, he all he got was a goal, and he got picked up a yellow card at the weekend. Had he not picked up that yellow card, you'd be looking at an eight pointer. Um, so clean sheet. Not not necessarily no. Uh, maybe BPS as well a little bit. No, I don't think it would have made a difference actually. Looking at it, so he wouldn't. So, but he would have got the one point back for the yellow card at least to sixteen. Oh yes, true. Yeah, but just the goal and a clean sheet, and he's on eight points. So if if Werner scores a goal and Chelsea keep a clean sheet, he's on six points because he ain't getting anything extra. That little couple of point pips extra. The only thing that made me think on the weekend was. I want to be able to captain midfielders more than I want to captain strikers. That's the point because the captain and midfielder is not two points. It's just four. Yeah, makes just it just makes for a big difference. just for a goal. If if your team's defensively solid as well, you're potentially looking at four more. Which for a striker, you need that second goal. Exactly. That's why I think uh, the only thing that I took away from the Aubameyang and Salas and what have you was the ability to pick up that extra little cheeky point. Um, and Salah obviously really cleaned up, but Vardy. Scored two goals, two penalties, and got maximum bonus points, same as Salah. But he was five points behind Salah in total. That's a big jump, big big drop off there. Um, was it five points behind? I think so. Who? Uh, Vardy picked up five. Uh, Vardy was thirteen, I think. 13, seven points. Seven off. points behind off one extra goal. So it's quite a big difference um, there. So, and Salah didn't keep a clean sheet. Had he kept a clean sheet, it'd have been even a little bit more. So yeah, I, I think the only thing I took away from it was leaning more towards midfielders. Uh, the way Aubameyang took his goal, when when he was running into that penalty box, was there any doubt that he was going to score at all? No. That guy's a stone-cold no. killer in front of goal. So We're going to talk, him, we're gonna talk about that goal a lot on tomorrow's podcast, by the way. He's deadly. Deadly in front of goal, running into the box. I just had no doubt that he was going to score and get his shot off on target. So um, it was the right decision. 
and he's going to do he, he's going to do bits at the weekend do, again against West Ham. Do, so. I, I don't mind that you've gone for Timo Werner, by the way, and a lot of other people have, but it's absolutely fine, and we're not going to wait no till tonight if that's right or wrong. But for me, it was a straight choice between Salah and Aubameyang. Now, for me, the one thing I kept saying in the build-up to game week one was I wasn't sure what Leeds were going to do. Now, in hindsight, reflecting on the correspondent week podcast we did with Andy Martin, FPL tactician, was he was saying, Leeds won't change. It will play mm-hmm. exactly the same way. And then thinking about that in hindsight, knowing that it was going to be quite an open game, but then it wouldn't have led me to think any different, to think, oh, well, well, if it's going to be really open with Mane's movement and stuff, he'll get chances in the box, and he didn't particularly. Um, and I, I felt, just looking at it on paper, that Fulham were much weaker than Leeds. And that's why I went with, with Aubameyang. And Fulham were weaker than Leeds, because well, they got steamrolled at 3-0, and Leeds gave Liverpool a run d- for Defensively, game. between the two teams, there probably wasn't much in it. Yeah, I mean, that Liverpool-Leeds game uh, could easily have finished 5-1 to Liverpool. Um, like to easily, easily could have finished 4-2 to Leeds, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I just think Liverpool had much more attacking threat than Leeds did. Um, but Liverpool were architects of their own destruction a little bit. It may, has it made me want to captain Salah anymore? No, but it's made me think that I want midfield captaincy options. And who are the best midfield captaincy options? We come back to De Bruyne, Sterling, Fernandez, Salah, Aubameyang, any one of those. So I'd like to have two of those plus another option in Chelsea and uh, Liverpool. So I think United and City for midfield coverage, which would be Sterling or KDB and then Bruno, and then Chelsea coverage in Werner and Liverpool coverage in Trent, when I see a little bit more defensively from them, gives me enough to make me happy. I'm not going to be able to squeeze in a Bamiyang, so I'm going to live without. Having said that, uh, I think we all slept on Willian as well. I think a lot of us didn't think he was going to start, mate. That was my yeah, impression. Yeah, I thought he was going to start. Um, the thing with Willian is his track record in FPL, 160 to 180 points consistently, is very good. And post-lockdown, he was very good as well. And what you hear about him from behind the scenes and stuff, he's a really good professional, trains hard, works hard. I don't think it matters that he's 32. I think he's still looking um, as fit and, and as good as he can be. Very good player. So I think he'll start ahead of Pepe or Saka. It's first choice in that team for me now, William. At the moment. We'll mm. come back on to Arsenal tomorrow. But on... I suppose the captaincy coverage, I, I, I don't mind a bit of William. I mean, he, he's set pieces as well. Yeah, get a captain, William, over Aubameyang, mate. I, don't, I won't own Aubameyang. That's the point. I think eight million there, it's okay. So you're saying now you won't go to Aubameyang at any point in the season? I get it. You haven't got now. There's no I reason for you to buy. Now. And they've got a difficult run between game weeks three and seven. So you probably and ain't I, going near I it till feel... after that. Uh, Bruno and KDB um, and Werner and Trent the likelihood of all four of them having a bad game week can only be if they all play each other it's not going to be there alright we're going to come on to up- upcoming fixtures in a sec if you had Salah at the moment would you sell him because there's there's, there's, there's two theories to this one, a, lot, a lot have already sold him one, as part of their plan right yeah one is my theory pre-game week one and it's was for me personally, it's worth saying, neither me or Suj own Salah. So it's quite easy. I own him. Oh, you do? Yeah, I oh, own Salah. Oh, fucking hell. So are you going to sell him? Finish what you're going to say and then we'll come back all to right, that All right, all right. See, that's interesting. No, I'm glad you've got yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. So my theory pre-game week one was, no matter what Mane did, he's coming out. Now, obviously now, that's an even easier decision for me. Don't get me wrong. But if Mane had scored a hat-trick at the weekend in the same circumstances that Salah did, Actually, the circumstances are relevant. If Mane had scored a hat trick at the weekend, he would still be getting sold for me now. There was a school of thought amongst many people is that you cannot sell a player who's just scored a hat trick. No, you can. Statistically, he's not going to score. He's less likely to score a hat trick again in the next game. I liked the way Salah played. I thought he was. He, he was, was very lively. To be he fair, he was good. He was good. He looks lean, new haircut, doing bits, and. People are like, oh, he only got the penalties. But we pick FPL players. We ask ourselves that's, pre-season. It's not an argument. Taker? You don't get the penalty takers and stuff. It's, yeah, it's not an argument. You take the penalties because you pick it's a player because he's on penalties sometimes. Like Kevin De Bruyne is more appealing because he probably is on penalties. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I, I would. if I was there, I would still consider selling him. I think in the end, there are other fires or other issues that I've seen that make me uh, avoid making the salary move. For example, Antonio's in my team. 
and I really didn't like what I saw from West Ham. So uh, I'm more likely to want to move Antonio on to Callum Wilson, who I think is is looking actually really good. Um, defensively, Doherty, is he going to be worth the £6 million? Is still a question mark. I mean, you'll tell me more tomorrow on, on your opinion on where Spurs are going to go, but that was a concern as well. So th- th- I've got those issues. Those two seem like more sensible moves to make, especially with West Ham's run than Liverpool's. Are you going to sell Salah or not? Probably not. Okay, so this is... Probably what, not. Was your intention pre-game week one to be thinking, yes, I will? Yeah, my, my intention pre-game week one was Salah to... Uh, Salah to Fernandez, Martial to uh, from Antonio to Martial. So are you now not going for Fernandez? I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know yet because we, the game week's not over, James. Right. So basically, like, if no, no, I get that. Up and Havertz and Werner do bits. If Havertz, because uh, it's funny, you, you saw uh, what I said. I'd seen. I wanted to know what type of player Havertz was, and so I went to watch on YouTube. Like, is he a get in the box type player what's he look like on skill dark wing duck quick? dangerous <laughs> it is it definitely is but it's like every goal that Havertz scored last season and every assist pretty much came from inside the box if you look at um all of them that he scored for for uh Leverkusen wasn't it or wherever he was um he was inside the and quite often in the bloody six yard box like getting on the end of stuff and what have you and he's rapid he is rapid. So he was definitely attack-minded. I just can't see how you can play that guy in the deep-lying role. Um, so I thought, okay, I'm going to go with it. If if him and Werner tear it up today, I feel like they give me a, they, they will cause che- uh, Liverpool problems as well. And it gives me a little bit of comfort and safety. If they're really bad and Chelsea are disastrous today, then I've got other problems to think about there as well, um, potentially. So... Yeah, no, uh, from my perspective... And Havertz over Deli Alley now looks like I <laughs> regardless of whether Havertz I, I plays don't, or not. I don't necessarily have too much of a problem going for Havertz or Pulisic as opposed to Fernandes this game week. Bearing in mind, I'm definitely bringing Martial with me. Mm. Um, and say, OK, yeah, it's Liverpool, but then knowing that I'm ready to go for West Brom in game week three from a Chelsea perspective as well. So I'm, op- yeah. I'm open to that idea and it might mean it becomes... That's going to give me more money available. It might mean that becomes a minus eight for me in terms of what I do. So I'm a little bit open to that. But what I definitely know what I'm doing this weekend is who I'm captaining. Aubameyang. Aubameyang. Yeah. And that's uh, 50% to do with Aubameyang. And every everybody listening just went, uh, every, everyone listening just went, I won't. <laughs> and 50% to do with what you saw with West Ham. Because it's 50% about the player and how he plays and the style of play. And 50% to do with the opposition. Now, what we saw at the weekend was that West Ham have issues in the fullback area, cutting in from the left. And Aubameyang is particularly good at that. So it completely makes logical sense to do that. Um, I originally had a captaincy plan to go with uh, a United asset. And that leaves me with a choice of do I then captain um, a Salah again and just go blind or stick with Werner or Havertz, um, which I'll, I'll make that call closer to the time I need to see the game let's today. let's look at this weekend for the moment in terms of fixtures because I think this is part of the thing in terms of I, I want to understand for me if I'm you know me I'm single-minded I won't ask anyone for advice I'll come up with my okay. own opinions which is possibly to my downfall it is what it is but if I look at the fixtures for the weekend Everton v West Brom now there's going to be a few people right now thinking target West Brom Everton very impressive yesterday could you legitimately captain Richarlison, Calvert Lewin, or yeah. Hammers as a differential? 100%. Yes, you could. Leeds versus Fulham. It's against Fulham. Yeah, I think it's probably could. not. It's probably not the best choice though. No. United against Palace appeals. Fernandez, yes. Martial, Rashford, if they're available. Palace surprise at the weekend though. Would they be decent? So suddenly it makes you think. Roy's they rarely get spanked, do they? Palace. It's true, but they've been known to get the odd early season beating at certain places. Okay. Yeah, Incl- I mean, it's, including it Old Trafford, although Don't it didn't last year. It appeals, but it appeals less than it did this time last week before we'd seen Palace play. Or Bamiang, obviously, against yourselves. Oh, stand out. Southampton against Spurs. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> Just, you know, basically, is Danny Ings a captainable asset this weekend? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Newcastle Brighton probably not a captain of all games. You know, Southampton weren't good at the back could, as well. So could, Harry Kane is still a captain. Of Chelsea, Brighton. Chelsea Liverpool will skip over because we might be in a situation as you correctly said in twenty four hours where we're going. Oh my God, Harvitz unbelievable, or Werner's unbelievable. In which case, you might go, yeah, with the way Liverpool mm-hmm. defend at the weekend. Um, Jamie Vardy against five, Burnley. I've got five in that game at the moment: Harvitz, Werner, Salah, Trent, Robbo. That's a lot. Oh. So I feel like this game week, I'm going to have to just hold my breath and. I'll be ahead of you by game week three. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vardy against Burnley. He's captainable. He's not the best captaincy option. Villa, Sheffield United, skip. Man City at Wolves Monday night. Because we haven't seen any of City yet, and we um, we haven't seen Wolves yet. Uh, we, we roughly know what we're getting, though, don't we? Yeah, it's not one that leaps off the page for okay, me to fine. suddenly go for captaincy. A Bami against West Ham is the best captaincy option right now. If I owned the Bami, I could would captain him. I think... I would make the move if I really felt if if Arsenal didn't have a really bad game week three and four. I would move from Salah to Aubameyang to give me the captaincy coverage. And then I've just got two Chelsea attackers against two Liverpool defenders this weekend. It can only end in tears. I think, prediction, that the most captain player this game week will be Mohamed Salah. Yes. Because the game's gone from like three and a half million players to six million teams suddenly in the game. And people will leave the armband on there. Why would you move it? Is is that right? A way to Chelsea, Mohamed Salah captain. When you look at United at home to Palace, Arsenal at home to West Ham. No. United and Arsenal are better captaincy options this weekend. Some people are going to look at what happened at the weekend and go, he's a high scoring player and there's plenty of more educated people who are listening to content, reading content, etc. are going to go, that's not the best fixture, but oh my God, I've now got the fear of not captaining him. Oh, permit captain Salah, etc. No one's saying you shouldn't captain Salah. If, if you believe he's going to be your highest scoring player, do it. But it's going to be swung on what happened this weekend gone, isn't it? Yeah, massively. Massively. I was not against, um, and uh, I did think about it yesterday, selling Salah for Aubameyang for captaincy this weekend. Uh, if if I really think, you know what, Antonio, Doherty, all, all the other bits and pieces in and around the fringes of my squad that didn't deliver at the weekend... I'm happy to to ride them out. Then I don't mind selling Salah for Aubameyang this weekend. Because one thing that didn't happen for uh, Saturday night, um, and I'm not, I didn't check yesterday yet. To be honest with you, but it was like price rises and price falls. I no don't, one, I don't think there's been any yet. Yeah, no one's risen in price. No one's fallen. And we did think that there would be a mass exodus to United and City, and that could cause a little bit of volatility. We haven't seen anything yet, so I'll wait and see tonight. If I think, um, he's coming though. By the yeah, way, if I think. Uh, that I can just get away with making that move from Salah to Aubameyang and Captain Aubameyang this weekend, knowing that I'm going to have to make a move again on that premium from Aubameyang to Fernandes or Kevin De Bruyne or whatever. I don't mind. Um, I don't mind doing that. It's a very very short term move, right? But and it's not my style of management to buy a player to captaining, knowing that I may move him on the week after. Here's a take, and it was the best take I saw on Saturday after the game, was from our Man City correspondent, actually, at FPL Pringle. And he tweeted, um, in fact, it was a half-time of the game on Saturday, he tweeted, said, uh, of the Liverpool game, I can totally understand people going without Salah. I'm still probably going to take him out for game week two. But his consistency at home to non-top six teams is insane. I couldn't see past him for captaincy this week. You reflect on that and you think, yeah, fucking hell, that's so true. So when you look a little deeper at the fixtures coming up, this is interesting for Liverpool. Home fixtures up until uh, game week 15 when they play West Brom. Arsenal, Sheffield United, yourselves, game week seven, Leicester, Wolves, Tottenham. It's tough. A Salah's home games between now and game week 15. Tough. Now, the standout there could well be game week seven. And having had a look at the fixtures for that game week, uh, with Man City playing Sheffield United, Manchester United and Arsenal playing each other, Chelsea away to Burnley, he is going to be the standout that game week in game week seven. And my early thoughts now are get him in, get him out. Literally for that. That's in my head where I am at for that particular fixture right now. Now, between now and then, you've got a difficult run of fixtures. 
which might mean we see a more resilient West Ham. That, yeah, I would say that more we've difficult. given Liverpool a few difficult games in recent times um, and we've raised our game for them. Like, uh, we haven't got a, a record of success, but we haven't been smashed by Liverpool particularly. I think I would wait and see on that. It's a, it's a, it's still five weeks away. Exactly. No decision um, has to be yeah. made and now. I, can't, I feel like I can't make any um, long-term decisions or, or, or kind of judgments on West Ham based on Saturday's perf- performance because it was so dissimilar to some of the performances we've had post-lockdown. So it's going to be an interesting one. I, I wouldn't rule out myself going from Salah to Aubameyang just to captain him this weekend and then using a transfer again thereafter. What I may have to do, though, uh, is take a hit to get rid of Antonio um, if I want to get rid of him this week as well. Yeah, I may have to do that. People who keep Salah this game week are going to find it very difficult to come off afterwards. And I think that's absolutely fine. And I think a lot... Why? Why? Yeah, you can sell him at any time. Why wouldn't you move now? Um... It's not why. Why would you move now? Why wouldn't you move now? If next week you've got a different, if you're going to roll your transfer into next week to allow you to make two um, for free, then it's fine to move him on next week. So I, what I'm what saying, saying I, is I don't think him blanking. Get rid of him. I don't get rid think of him before Chelsea. I don't think him blanking this weekend should change. If he does, and I'm not saying he will or he won't, I don't think that would change anybody's opinion on what they're doing with him afterwards. That's, no. that it shouldn't do that's what I'm saying I think the, the look on it would be okay is he likely to go mental in the next two game weeks against Chelsea and Arsenal in my opinion no then it's Villa away then it's like Sheffield United then it's a Merseyside derby it doesn't feel like there's games where for me in the next five or six until potentially you in game week seven where he's gonna where he, he's gonna go off as mental now he's always capable of it because he's because he's Mohamed Salah. Don't get me wrong, but I think you're gonna. The chances are you're gonna keep getting there and keep thinking, "Oh, I want to captain him because I know what he's capable of." But but he's not going to be playing the same type of teams. He's not going to get two penalties every game week, right? He's not going to play in a fixture that's going to be that open. The second the second goal we scored is a weldy of a finish, right? Yep. It could have dropped to anybody. He's good enough to obviously finish it when it gets there. I just don't think, put it this way, it hasn't occurred to me to think, oh, I've got to buy him. No. He's not in my thoughts for the weekend, no. personally. And then that comes back round and then is it, do I have a problem? Because should I be considering him as captain this game week off the back of what he's just done? No. What has happened in the past is no indication of what's about to happen in the future. Um, especially not something as rare as a 20-point haul. I think your plan to stick to Bamiyang is the best captaincy option this weekend. Closely followed by a Fernandez or a Martial um, as the three top captaincy options. Then I'd probably say even a Harry Kane against Southampton might be up there um, or a Son. And then Aubameyang's going this weekend. Mm-hmm. I'm already hitting in that stage in my head. That's what I'm doing, no matter what he does against you. He's captain this week and then he's getting sold. Yep. And I think a lot of other people are obviously on that thought process as well of probably move into De Bruyne as well or to City but it could even be you're looking at that Chelsea West Brom fixture now and thinking okay now I could go all Bamiang to Harvitz here and really shove the funds around or something because right now that Chelsea at West Brom in game week three suddenly looks like the most probable for a captaincy actually rather than say City against Leicester for example mm-hmm. United are at Brighton so just looking ahead I think yeah all Bamiang this game week for me game week three at the moment looks like Chelsea Chelsea, interestingly, at home to Palace in game week four. City are away to Leeds, which could be fun. I think some of the space that De Bruyne could get in that game could be quite laughable, actually. Um, Arsenal and Sheffield United, it doesn't appeal. Liverpool at Villa. So I think City or Chelsea are probably the standouts in game week four. In game week five, Liverpool or Everton doesn't stand out. Chelsea against Southampton, City against Arsenal. United at Newcastle. Might be the standout. That's quite challenging, that one. I wouldn't be captaining a Liverpool player in a Merseyside derby. Mm. Unless it was Trent, I don't think. Game week six, Arsenal against Leicester, Liverpool, Sheffield United, United against Chelsea. Man City are at West Ham. Looks to stand out. And then you're back to game week seven, where then, yes, I think Salah is the standout again. And again, there's different options there. And I think this is another reason why 
people are looking to do the idea of jumping between these premiums. Because even looking at game week three, right now, until I've seen Chelsea tonight, I don't really know if it's them or United is probably the standout in game week three. Or if it's if I think De Bruyne is going to play in an advanced position against Leicester, which I suspect he might, then that could well appeal to me, actually. The mistake I have, uh, probably to close up on, is historically I've been very safe with my captain picks. I, l- I look back at things like captaining Raul Jimenez against Villa in game week 33 and thinking, the fuck are you doing, James? Raul Jimenez ceiling in a game of football, generally speaking, is probably one goal. Yeah, a goal and assist is Consistency day, for your FPL team, brilliant. Captain option, not really against anyone, I don't think. Yep. So there's other players, perhaps playing in slightly deeper positions, who are more likely to miss. Let's say De Bruyne as an example, but he's more likely to go mental in any single game week. And I think that, for me, is the change that I'm trying to make this year. He's not thinking, I really think he'll score this weekend, so I'm going to captain him. He's beginning to have the mindset of, that player there is the most likely to go off and do a Salah. That's what I need to think. But no regrets on Aubameyang game week one. And there'd be no regrets from going Aubameyang at the weekend either. This is this is this is the uh, the reason the whole conversation is framed in in stupidity because Aubameyang returned with a seven pointer. It's just and it's good. It's fine. <laughs> I'll take it all day yep. long. So interesting uh, to know what your thoughts are on captaincy. Jump in the threads below. We know there's plenty of content out there on the World Wide Web about captaincy options within FPL and different people's strategies and what have you. Uh, we'll be back at you tomorrow with a full rundown of all eight fixtures uh, in game week one and a, a little bit of a look ahead into game week two. Touch wood, fingers crossed that Timo Werner scores six today and then we'll all be laughing to the bank. Well, I will anyway. Uh, so there we go. I don't care how many get, if Ryan gets four penalty saves. So <laughs> <laughs> we can all have a good laugh at my shocking FPL week tomorrow. Fantastic. Um, as always, guys, thank you for tuning in. Stay safe. Ciao for now. Thanks, everyone. Be nice to each other. Cue music, please, man, child. <laughs>